unstable come no you are not alone oh come barren and waiting ones weary of praying come see what your God has done Christ is Good morning, St. Helens, and welcome to our service this morning, uh, the second Advent, second Sunday of Advent. And if you are here looking forward to Christmas, full of joy, full of happiness, that's great, fantastic. Um, but if you're here carrying burdens or sorrowful, or you've got friends that you are carrying their sorrows, you are also welcome. And we pray that as we meet together, um, we can all join together in bringing who we are to God to give praise to him and that we would hear from him and would be blessed by him this morning. So we'll start with, I've asked Harry to come up and light our second Advent candle. And now, please join me at the bottom of these. Oh, thank you, Harry. 
I must say, I did say to Harry, if he could light the advent calendar before, and obviously that's not a good thing. Don't try that at home. <laughs> so, people of God, be glad. Your God delights in you, giving you joy for sadness and turning the dark to light. Be strong in hope, therefore, for your God comes to save. You are God's children. And together, Lord, make us one in the love of Christ today and forevermore. So let's stand and join together um, as we look forward to the coming of Christ. will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Our God, you reign forever. Our hope, our strong deliverer. You are Oh, 
We'll go to their groups. Oh, who's there? There are groups? Yeah. Okay. So our young people can go to their groups in the Emmaus rooms, and the non-young people uh, can stay here, and we'll continue in worship. Washed 
Thank you, Lord, that your spirit is here. And that we can give up to you all our faults, all our sorrows. And know that you give us grace. You give us forgiveness. You give us strength. And you give us peace. We thank you, Lord. Amen. Please be seated for our readings. morning. The first reading today is from Matthew chapter 3 verses 1 to 12. <clears throat> in those days John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is he who was spoken of through the prophet Isaiah a voice of one calling in the wilderness prepare the way for the Lord 
made straight paths for him. John's clothes were made of camel's hair and he had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locusts and wild honey. People went out to him from Jerusalem and all Judea and the whole region of Jordan. Confessing their sins, they were baptised by him in the Jordan River. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to where he was baptising, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. And do not think you can say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. I tell you that out of these stones God can raise up children for Abraham. The axe is already at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptise you with water for repentance, but after me comes one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptise you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor, gathering his wheat into the barn and burning up the chaff with unquenchable fire. The second reading is from Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 to 10. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might, the spirit of the knowledge and fear of the Lord, and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears, but with righteousness he will judge the needy with justice. He will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt, and faithfulness the sash around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat, and the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear, their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den, and the young child will put its hand into the viper's nest. They will neither neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. In that day, the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for all the peoples. The nations will rally to him, and his resting place will be glorious. Shall we pray together? Lord Jesus, thank you so much for the witness and testimony of John the Baptist, pointing to you, revealing you, preparing the way for you. And as we look at his life and words together, would you help us to be people who prepare the way for you in their lives? Pray these things in your name, Jesus. Amen. So this is the part of Advent where we have lit the second candle and I have to restrain myself from making bad jokes about four candles. Fantastic. I've got a laugh. Tick. Um, But seriously, we have four candles and I love this tradition of moving through the four candles and then there's a special moment when you light the white candle on Christmas either at midnight or in the morning And it's just beautiful. And I've had many discussions about what the four candles mean. And I've had lots of disagreements because basically everyone thinks it means something different. You want me to say there's an official Church of England thing? I'll give you my best guess, but I'm probably wrong. Um, Peace, love, joy, hope, you name it. Um, And there's this pink candle. I'm sure you've noticed the pink candle. Um, Just as a straw poll, would you, if you were lighting the candles, would you light it on the third week or the fourth week? Anyone for the third? No one, anyone for the fourth? Oh, a few people on the fourth. Interesting. Interesting. Um, 
I'll let you know that in one of my last churches, I got them to buy a set that was four purple so that no one argued about which ones <laughs> went to like the pink one. <laughs> Um, but from my understanding, and this is not the gospel truth, it's not in the Bible, but I think these are what they mean. The first one is the patriarchs, and that's Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all those people who prepared the way of God. The second one is the prophets, and confusingly, we always talk about John the Baptist because he was the last of the prophets on this week. The third one is John the Baptist next week, so I always end up preaching on John the Baptist more than any other character in the Bible twice a year. Um, I'll leave something hopefully for the preacher next year to say, next year, next week to say. And the final one is the Virgin Mary. And so some people think this is bizarre tradition. The third candle is Gaudaute Sunday. If you've ever heard of that, it's just funny. I don't even know why. A little bit of light in the darkness. So sometimes people like the pink one on the third. And then some people think the pink stands for Virgin Mary because she was a woman. So you've, <laughs> on the fourth. Who knows? But anyway, the point is, it doesn't really matter. The point is we're on a journey of preparing the way for the white candle, which is Jesus, the one who is amongst us. And last week I talked about, are you ready? Advent is a time of getting ready. Are you ready for Jesus' first coming? Are you ready for his second coming when he comes in glory? And today I want to ask, are we preparing the way for other people to be ready? Are we preparing the way for other people to meet Jesus? You may have noticed there's a banner on one of those pillars that talks about preparing the way of the Lord. Yes, I'm not, I'm not wrong. Yes, and I think there's something really important. We are called as God's people to prepare the way, which is exactly what John the Baptist did, so we can learn a few things from him. He was called to make people's paths straight so that they could encounter the risen Jesus. And I think he does it in two key ways that I want us to think about today, which are two markers that I see also in the ministry of Jesus, which are challenge, and invitation. Challenge and invitation. Now the first thing is that John was definitely a challenging character. He ate locusts and wild honey. He wore camel's hair and a leather belt. And he wandered around saying to people, you brood of vipers. <laughs> and if I called you this Sunday a brood of vipers, I think some of you might be a little offended and some of you might even leave the church and probably fair enough. So it's quite a hard thing for him to say. And he's calling them to repentance. And it's important to remember that word repentance literally is from a Greek word, metanoia, which means turn around and face in the other direction. So yes, it's about being sorry, but it's about more than that. It's about changing the whole way you think and see the world. And John the Baptist doesn't just say repent, but he says produce the fruits of repentance, not just in your heart, but in your life and in your actions. And in the parallel passage that also talks about John the Baptist in Luke's gospel, we've had Matthew today in Luke's gospel, John expands on this and he talks about some specific actions that we are called to do. He says, if you've got two coats, give one away. If, you've got, uh, if you're a tax collector and you're, uh, you're earning tax from people, don't screw people over, don't get more than you should. If you're a Roman soldier, don't oppress people, don't you misuse your power. So these are very strong, quite challenging actions for justice. He's challenging people, don't just repent, produce the fruits of repentance. And it's helpful to note that the words that, that John uses in this passage, repent and believe the kingdom of God has come near, are the exact words that Jesus uses so often in his ministry. If you look at Mark's uh, gospel, the very first words that come out of Jesus' mouth in that gospel is repent and believe for the kingdom of God has come near. So John is preparing the way, but he's also starting to preach the message, the very message, exactly, that Jesus is going to come and in time preach. So he's challenging. He's not easy. I'm not sure that you'd like John the Baptist around for a dinner party. He would be a bit odd, wouldn't he? So that's the first thing, but also there's an invitation. And so often we see in Jesus' ministry, he says, take up your cross and follow, but come and follow, come be with me, come walk with me. There's that balance of, I'm going to challenge you, but actually I'm going to invite you into my, into my love, into my family, into my closeness. And here there is a word of hope. John talks about being transformed by being baptised, by being cleansed, by being purified, by dedicating ourselves and our lives to Jesus. And it's a word of hope that we see echoed in the reading, the second reading we had from the uh, book of Isaiah, which talks about this stump that will come out of the stock of Jesse. And that's an image of Jesus coming, of him coming, a messianic promise. That's how we read it. 
And it talks about him coming as one who has a spirit of wisdom and counsel and understanding. He sees how things really are. He judges for the poor. And he brings reconciliation to all of creation. It's a funny parallel in these two passages. You've got John the Baptist saying, you're a brood of vipers. And then we've got this image in Isaiah of a child playing on a cobra's den, which always makes me feel a little nervous, I'm going to be honest. But it's that lovely idea that all of creation will be reconciled, not just as in God, not just as in one another, although that's important, but God is going to reconcile all creation. So the cow and the bear will be friends, and the child and the snake, much as I don't like to say it, will be friends. That they'll somehow, everything will bring peace. And I, it breaks my heart to a certain extent because Jesus said, didn't he, blessed are the peacemakers, for they'll be called the children of God. He encourages to be people who make peace. And we get there so far, and so often we're not peacemakers, are we? We've got the flags of Ukraine here, and we remember the situations in our world. But actually, that's the trajectory of salvation history, that one day everything will be at peace together. And that's hopeful, isn't it? That You don't look very hopeful this morning. Come on, that's really good news. We, we are hopeful when we realise that that's where we're going. So we've got challenge, we've got invitation, the word of hope, and then we've got this idea that that he promises the fire of the Holy Spirit. He says, I baptise with water, but one who's coming after me, he will baptise with the fire of the Holy Spirit. And remember that fire enlivens and warms and encourages and empowers, but also fire purifies, doesn't it? It, All the dross gets melted away. And that's something about John the Baptist's ministry is that he encourages, he points the way to Jesus, but also he says, come on, guys, we've got to be pure and we've got to be fired up for the things that we're called to do. So in a moment, I'm going to show you a video which is going to be a key part of this sermon. And it talks about preparing the way by whispering the word hope. And I think there's so many people in our world, in our parish in our city in our region who need that word hope whispering to them today I'm not sure you might be someone who sat here today I need someone to whisper a word of hope and in the video um because it's a bit muffled I'm going to tell you what happens and then you'll know and understand it when you see it and it's the first verse is about a man who's down and out he's a vagabond he's struggling with life he's 32 got one pair of shoes and a bad taste in his mouth And he's saying, does God even love me? Because why would he lead me this way? So really, it moves me. Hopefully, as you watch the video, it'll move you. And in the midst of this, Gabriel turns up, the angel Gabriel, and he comes and he says to this vagabond, I'm whispering a word of hope in your ear. And as he does that, as the song behind it goes to the chorus, he shouts out hallelujah. He stands up and everything changes as someone has whispered hope to him. And then in the second verse of this song, there's a woman who sat in, in a public place and she's laying on the ground. And the song says it's fine, she's finding it hard to cope. And we presume that maybe she's struggling with her mental health. She's struggling so much that she's in a street and she's just laying down. She can't cope with the world as it is. And again... The man who, who, get, who Gabriel has changed, this vagabond, goes and he whispers hope to her and they get up and they sing hallelujah. And it changes them. And then they start singing. They're saying, we're a voice that's crying in the wilderness, hallelujah. Exactly like John the Baptist was a voice crying in the wilderness. And I guess as you watch this video, I want you to engage with the song. It moves me. But also, I think what I want us to think about is Who are the people in our lives, in our world, who we encounter tomorrow, the day after, the day after that, who really are desperate for that word of hope, are desperate for someone to kneel down beside them and say, hope. Hope about Jesus, hope that someone cares, hope that they're not alone, hope that they are loved. Everyone needs to hear that. There's people in our communities that need to hear that. And I'm praying that we will have something with the fire of the Holy Spirit in us that we have the boldness to whisper those words of hope to those around us, to see that people need it, to whisper it and to bring transformation. And then that way we prepare the way for Jesus. So I'm going to show you this video and then I'm going to come and pray for us afterwards.
There's a man in the corner and his clothes are on And he's holding out his hand You can see in his eyes as the people walk by He's gonna take that money and then go and spend it on dope. That man stopped by and I saw a smile inside as he gently whispered hope. Well, the trump started to cry, just kept saying, Why, why, why can't you see I'm a darling? I'm 32 and I've got this one pair of shoes and a bad taste in my mouth I think it's clear to see that even God don't love me or else why would he leave me this way then Gabriel just smiled and said be peace my child Salvation is here today He got up to his feet and he sang Hallelujah People were turning around in the street He looked them in the eyes and he sang Hallelujah There's someone here you gotta meet A vagabond turned round with a sign Gave me out to smile and disappeared And when he looked to the crowd They were laughing out loud But he could not see them for tears and When his vision came round There was a young girl on the ground And he knew she was fine at heart no, she never was a fighter until he lay beside her and gently whispered hope. They got up to their feet and they sang hallelujah. People in the street, they were turning around. They looked them in the eyes and they sang hallelujah. There's someone here. We have found this sign Hallelujah, hallelujah Hallelujah, hallelujah Every knee will bow and every tongue confess I'm the voice of one crying In the wilderness crying Would you close your eyes with me for a sec? And maybe in your mind's eye, just think of one person or maybe two or three in your life, in your community, someone who you encounter in your workplace who maybe could do with a word of hope. And maybe in your heart you just want to pray for them. And ask for the courage to, to share that word of hope. To tell them that things will not always be like this. And Lord, would you give us the courage, 
the gift of your spirit to discern when is the right time to speak and when is the right time just to squeeze the hand. And would you help us to be bringers of hope, preparing your way, wherever we go as your ambassadors in the world. Speak to us hope and help us to share your hope, we pray. Amen. Let's pray, or let's keep praying. Dear Lord and loving Heavenly Father, thank you for this day that you have made. Let us rejoice, let us be glad in it. Thank you for bringing this community of people together today. Thank you that we are part of something bigger across this city, across this country, across this world, and across the heavens. Thank you that you are almighty God. As we move through the season of Advent, we are aware of so many plans and so many details slotting into place, so many elements coming together to create this Christmas story, which gives us hope for the future. By themselves, so many of those elements make no sense. The prophecies of the Old Testament mean little without their fulfillment in the new. So too, Lord, help us trust that the bits in our own lives, indeed the bits in the wider world today that confuse us and frustrate us, help us trust it will make sense. If not now, then in your own divine time. Lord, give us patience. Help us trust. Bring us hope. Lord, the issues that make no sense to us, the issues that weigh on our hearts, we bring them before you this morning in the quiet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, we bring before you those who are unwell, those who can't join us today, because to do so would be too complicated, too painful, too exhausting. Whether that comes from a physical issue or a mental or a spiritual one, Lord, we know it brings you sadness, as it does us. We bring before you those who need your comfort, who long for your blessing, who crave your healing, Lord, make them right, make things right so that they can rejoin your community of worshippers. Lord, we know them and we love them. And in the quiet, we bring them before you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, we pray for your peace today. We speak of your son as the Prince of Peace and we could really do with that peace today. We're aware that there's a lot of discord and disharmony across your world and that it's far from perfect. We know that this can be the pain of family discontent, grievances, hurt, arguments, and upset, and upset made more evident and underlined by Christmas. We are aware of tensions with work colleagues, hostility with neighbours, and factions in your church. Further afield, we see fighting made manifest in war. Lord, bring your peace. And Lord, help us bring your peace. Create in us peaceful hearts with generous spirits. Help us pour oil on troubled waters. Help us create your heaven on earth. 
in the quiet of these moments, we ask for your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, help us prepare in this Advent time. Not just presents and food and time off work, help us hear the story of Christ's birth with fresh ears. Help us fix our eyes on you, the author and perfecter of our faith. Bring us into a deeper relationship with you for your glory and in your name. And in your mercy, hear our prayers. Amen. And we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So as we draw our service to a close, uh, let's stand and join in uh, with this song, Let This Place Be a Humble Room Where Your People Will Learn to Wait.
us in our notices and blessing. Thank you. Do you want to take a seat? So you may have noticed that Christmas is coming and hopefully you've got one of these on your uh, benches which has on the back it has all the services on the front it has the word hope as you've noticed it's a bit of a theme hear a bit more about it in the next few weeks. Um, just to point out a few things that are happening in the next few weeks. So next Sunday in the afternoon, there's a traditional carol service at four. Um, do come along to that. The week after that, on the 18th, we have our pop-up nativity at the 11 a.m. service. That's an opportunity to dress as a shepherd or a sheep or a lobster or Jesus. Whatever you would like to dress up as, there is a part for everyone. There's no rehearsal. It's going to be fun. Do come along. Um, in the evening on that day after you've watched the World Cup final, um, you can come along to our Contemporary Cows, which is at seven here, which um, we've been planning this week, haven't we? It's been, hopefully it's going to be great. Um, and then uh, Portobello Christmas is half 11 on Wednesday, the 21st of December. I think the schools are broken up by then, so everyone is welcome. Um, we'll be singing some cows, having some food. Hopefully Santa will be making an appearance as well. So that'll be fun. Um, Chris Single is at St Paul's this year at four on Christmas Eve. That's going to be fab. And here at 11.15 for Midnight Communion um, on Christmas Eve. I suspect forgetting where that was then. And then to, on Christmas Day, half nine here for Christmas service. So please come along to as many of those as you feel comfortable. And if one of them you think, oh, someone at work would like that, invite them along. Everyone is welcome. It'd be great to see you. Hopefully they'll be fairly accessible services that anyone would feel welcome in um, and just to point you towards the future as well that on the first of uh, dis, uh, sorry the first of january you may have noticed that that's a sunday we're going to have one service which is going to be a traditional a traditional service here at half nine um, on that day if and i won't be offended if you stay in bed <laughs> um one i think one other thing is um, we finally made it into the 21st century. We have a card machine in church. I don't know if you noticed as you came in. So um, as, you, as you leave, you can see that, and you, there you can press five pounds or 10 pounds or whatever, put your card on it, and you can give a donation to the church, which is wonderful. You can also do gift aid and things like that. I, I don't really understand how it works yet, but I think giving is really simple. And uh, obviously that's 
If you would like to give that way, please do on a Sunday, but also it would be helpful for baptisms. And people who come as a one-off, they can give, which is wonderful. So do try that out. If you want to try it out, it's a great way of giving to the church, isn't it? Um, did you wave at me, Stephanie? Is there something? C- c- come. I'm hoping Stephanie might be the Virgin Mary in our... Um... Yeah, Hopefully... Gone, but um, I can say because we've had three three recent pregnancies. So Sarah had ho- Holly back in August, and my announcement is that Nat and Matt Jackson. So Nat Jackson gave birth on Thursday. I think it was 41 weeks. She had a little boy, Rory, eight pound eight, at home in the pool. All went really well. Um, so maybe we could pray. Um, yeah, as the, like yeah, I'll pray. So um, Lord Jesus, thank you so much for. Uh, bringing Rory into this world, Lord, thank you so much that the birth and the labour went well, and we just pray for them, for the Jacksons as a family, um, that all is going well, and we just praise your name for this wonderful gift of, uh, of a baby. Amen. So if Stephanie could go into labour partway through the, 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 the nativity, that would be wonderful, wouldn't it? <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, Last kind of random personal notice is that um, this week I got the keys to what's going to be the new vicarage in Sandor, which is exciting. Um, If anyone knows of any good decorators, come and talk to me. That'd be wonderful. I mean, paying, not, I'm not trying to get you to do it for me, (laughs) unless you are a paid decorator. If so, come and talk to me after the service. Okay, would you like to stand up? So, Lord Jesus, we thank you so much that you have been with us in this act of worship. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. And, Lord, I pray for each person here that you would fill them as they go with all that they need for all that they face this week. Help them to hear that word of your hope in their ears and help them to have the boldness and courage to share that hope with those who need it around them. And we pray the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you in all that you love and pray for this day and always. Amen. Thanks for coming, everyone. Do come for tea and coffee next door after the service. stay. 